Dr. Yuri Gogotsi sits in his office, surrounded by scattered papers, a half-empty coffee cup, and a small rubber Einstein figurine, his silent companion. The morning sun streams through the window, casting long shadows over the equations scribbled on the whiteboard. He takes a sip of his fifth cup of coffee, the bitter warmth sharpening his thoughts. Born in Ukraine, Yuri's fascination with the world began early. As a child, he would pester his father and grandfather with endless questions. What's inside a telephone? How does it carry voices? His father, patient and encouraging, handed him old devices to dismantle. Those moments of discovery, peering into the guts of machines, planted the seeds of a lifelong obsession with how things worked. His hero wasn't a comic book character, but Antoine Lavoisier, the father of modern chemistry. A worn copy of Great Chemists by Kalogen Manilov was his childhood treasure. Lavoisier's elegant experiments, proving diamond and charcoal were both carbon, left him awestruck. By high school, Yuri was already conducting experiments that bordered on the reckless. His aluminothermic reduction project won him a Young Scientist Medal, but also cost him part of his vision in one eye. A success and a disaster, he often muses. Safety goggles became non-negotiable after that. Years later, as a postdoc in Tokyo, he experienced his first true scientific epiphany. While studying silicon carbide, he stumbled upon carbon formation where silica was expected. The textbooks were wrong. That moment, realizing he had disproven a long-held belief, was intoxicating. Science wasn't just about confirming truths, it was about shattering them. Now, a professor in the US, Dr. Gagotzi, balances teaching with groundbreaking research. The accidental discovery of MXenes, ultra-thin, two-dimensional materials, revolutionized nanotechnology. What began as a failed lithium-ion battery experiment turned into a field-defining breakthrough. The world takes notice. Invitations to speak flood in and citations pile up. Yet the true measure of success for him is in the students he mentors, their growth, their own discoveries. Outside the lab, life has its rhythms. Mornings begin with coffee, strong and black. Evenings unwind with jazz or blues, the music a backdrop to his thoughts. Tennis is his escape, a rare moment when science doesn't dominate his mind. His wife, the steady force behind their family, manages the chaos of their lives, especially during their nomadic postdoc years across Europe and Asia. Dinner conversations at home often turn to the future. Imagine, he says to his children, a world where your shirt sleeve is a computer screen, where invisibility cloaks are real. Science fiction, he believes, is just science waiting to happen. One evening, as he walks through the lab, he pauses at an old SEM image framed on the wall, the cliff of the two-dimensional world, a stunning visualization of MX scenes. It has won awards, graced book covers, proof that beauty exists even at the atomic scale. He thinks of Lavoisier, of Oppenheimer, of Marie Curie, the dinner guests of his imagination. What would they say about his work? about the risks, the explosions, the serendipitous discoveries. The answer, he knows, is in the questions still unanswered, in the students who will come after him, in the moonlit dreams of nanorobots, soft as teddy bears, strong as steel. Science is his life, and what a life it is.